Hey everyone, it's Pearl S. and Toys back in today's video with another Marvel Legends action figure review and today we're looking at Moon Knight from the Strange Tales wave. I believe this is his West Coast Avengers look, which I mean, it already looks awesome. So I can't wait to open this guy up. First up, let's just take a look at the side art and the back of the box with a bio. After a near fatal encounter at an ancient Egyptian temple, mercenary Mark Spector agrees to become the earthly avatar for the deity, Khonshu. All right, but without further ado, let's get into the review. Created by writer, and I'm sorry for mispronouncing this, Doug Moach, and artist Don Perlin, Moon Knight would make his first comic book appearance in Werewolf by Night, issue number 32, which released in August of 1975. The man behind the hood, Mark Spector, would later join the West Coast Avengers, first appearing in West Coast Avengers issue number 21, which released in May of 1987, and that is what this figure is based on, his appearance from that series. This isn't the first time we have gotten Moon Knight in action figure form from Hasbro. We, uh, of course, had one released in the Sandman Build-A-Figure wave, I want to say, and it was based more on his, like, 2010s look his more modern appearance and we also got two releases of his classic design first as a walgreens exclusive and then as a target exclusive as part of the retro collection i love both of those versions but let's just see how this one stacks up against those starting with the sculpt and the paint apps this figure is almost entirely reused from the retro collection figure even sharing the sunfire body mold however this time all of the joints like the knees and the elbows are pinless so really glad to see that they updated it instead of just like reusing the same pin joints man does that gold paint on these ankle bands look fantastic my god it's so reflective and i love the lines going all throughout the sculpt right there it's even painted inside the lines nothing really else of note all throughout the rest of the legs it's not until we move up to the waist where we get some brand new pieces you see this belt piece with the scarab on the front of it and it is molded in a very nice gold plastic you can see some marbleization in there again it doesn't bother me that much and zooming in on that scarab, I love the little detail of the feathers and the wings and the feathers on the back of it as well. These little claws up front. You could even see like the wings of the actual beetle right there in the actual sculpt. And I love these other layers behind the belt piece itself. And it continues all the way around. And then moving up to the symbol, the moon, the crescent moon, the kind of... I don't know if that's on purpose. There's like a tiny sliver of the logo that looks like it is mispainted. You can see like a little bit of white right there. Doesn't really bother me because like from far away, you ain't noticing that. Again, for the rest of the body, it's like nothing really of note here. It's just all white plastic. The gauntlets are something else though. Yeah, again, you get some crazy Egyptian sculpt work on there. Those wings look fantastic. Wow, just wonderful looking sculpted in the same gold plastic as the belt piece and those gold pieces match up with the ankles really nicely the inside of the cape ooh, the inside of the cape is painted black except for the top which doesn't really matter at all because you're never going to see it on the other side it is all white it matches up with the head sculpt very well where the head is all blackened a not an entirely black but it's like dull black whereas the hood is all white love the droopiness of it going down between the eyes right here looks fantastic as well despite all the reuse like all the new pieces right here just like for some reason just sets it apart from the previous moon nights i love it so much moving on to accessories and first up are the fisted hands and yeah they have this really cool crescent moon shape at the back of the palm. It is reused from that Sandman Build-A-Figure Wave Moon Knight, which I unfortunately don't own anymore. I didn't think it really worked that well with the Walgreens or Retro Collection versions of Moon Knight, but here, I mean, I think it kind of works with the gauntlets, all the fancy designs. I, yeah, yeah, I think it actually like matches up really nicely. These fisted hands have some empty pegs around the knuckles, which you can plug his moonerangs into. Yeah, these tiny little accessories. One caveat, 
you really have to be careful if you're like posing this above a carpet like I am because like setting this up took me no joke two minutes because I kept dropping them onto my carpet and I'm like where is it <laughs> um I'd be like oh found it nope it's just a random piece of paper <laughs> it's like they get lost super super easily I think that's a problem I had with my first Moon Knight figure I lost them really fast but still this is an awesome feature I really wish it came with six so you could put them in both hands just to have them all loaded out but it's super easy to get them from another Moon Knight figure and just plug them into this fist. That's probably what I'm going to do when I pose them later for pictures. He also comes with two open C grip hands, which are kind of shaped more like trigger gripping hands. These also have the same crescent moon detailing on the back of the hand and some like knuckle pads to love that. With his hands, he's able to hold the remainder of his accessories. First is this bigger moon ring. Love the shape of it. There's actually like yeah, an edge. This thing looks sharp. He also has his staff. Again, reused, just like the moon rings from the older Moon Knight figures. If it ain't broke, don't fix it yet. And this thing looks nice. It's not painted in a pearlescent white color, so you don't have to worry about it like chipping or just like accumulating paint from other figures if he accidentally bumps into them. This one is just molded in a sparkling white plastic, and I think it looks great. And last but not least, his golden onk. Uh, yeah, just a really silly piece. Love this sculpt so, so much. It is sculpted in a gold plastic and matches up perfectly with his belt and his gauntlets. Mine's a little warped, but that's all right. Now moving on to articulation, the head isn't really able to move up that much and it isn't able to move down a whole lot either. It has like no pivot, but he does have a tiny bit of side to side movement. His arm is able to move this far up, this far back, and this far forward. He has rotation right there at the shoulder, an upper bicep swivel, a double jointed elbow that's able to bend in this much, and your standard wrist hinge allowing his hand to move up, down, all the way around. He has an ab crunch which allows him to bend this far back, this far forward. He has waist swivel, and his leg is able to kick up this much, go out to the side that much, and go back a decent amount. Upper thigh swivel and a double jointed knee which is able to bend up this much. Upper calf rotation, and his foot is able to move this far down this far up and he has all right time for the size comparisons and first up we have the walgreens exclusive moon knight which one do i like more mm, i'm definitely leaning towards the west coast avengers one at this very moment like i just think it looks so fresh and the cape being shorter allows him to pose a lot more easier don't get me wrong i love the all white look mine's a little dirty right there the gold on this piece just like wraps everything up together really nicely this is going to be the one on the shelf this one i'll still keep he'll just be on standby and next up we have conchu this is the build a figure from the moon knight disney plus series yeah it's it, like if you want to make it work it's just i don't know it just feels a little off you know this being live action this one being comic it's up to you three pack daredevil and vhs two pack spider-man silver centurion iron man and hawkeye Luke Cage and Iron Fist, Lilith and Brother Voodoo, Helverine and Damien Hellstrom, Dracula and Bloodstorm, and finally Blackheart, Deadpool and Hydra Bob, Deadpool and Hydra Bob, Darwin and Morbius, Gary and CT4279, Grogu and Sad Freakin' Rollins, and finally Jeff the Landshark and Spider Ham. All right, time for my final rating and my overall thoughts. I think I'm going to give Moon Knight here a final rating of... 9 out of 10. I'm going to give him a 9 out of 10, which may come across as a controversial decision. One that I may come to regret later down the line, but it, this figure is just a lot of fun to me. I love posing him around. He's just a figure that like I have off to the side, and when I'm watching like YouTube videos or editing, I'll like just grab him off the display and just like start messing with him. He's just a really fun figure to pose around and he comes with a lot of great accessories as well yes the figure has a lot of reuse you know that sunfire body mold has been done to death and all the accessories aside from the unk are all reuse i think those new pieces the belt and the wrist cuffs and those ankle pieces as well will make the figure just stand out even better on the display i absolutely love this look so so much so yeah 9 out of 10. But yeah, that'll do for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please tell me in the comment section below what you would rate this figure out of 10. I would love to see your guys' opinions. And while you're at it, please like 
and subscribe and share with a friend. Any support that you can show would be greatly, greatly appreciated. And with that, I will see you in the next one. Mm-hmm. Bye. Helverine and Moon, it looks so regal, so supremely well. Silver Centurion Hawkeye and, oops. <laughs>